All right, so let's find our first gem. And what I was thinking would be a cool idea for a gem if they don't already have it is a wrapper around drop zone. So drop zone is a JavaScript library that allows you to have this UI or drag and drop file uploads. So I wonder if they have a gem for this for Rails. So I'm gonna search up drop zone. Looks like there's a few suggestions. So we have drop zone and drop zone JS dash rails. So I think I want to start with just the drop zone by itself. If we take a look at this, oh, so when we do click, it just brings us to the search page. And drop zone, it says it's for Rails 4, which is pretty old at this point. So right now, like the newest version is 7, maybe like 7.1 or something. So this is for Rails 4, as from a long time ago. Uh, but there is 12,000 downloads. If I click on it, the last version was in 2013. This is crazy to see, and you can see the author and everything. He's probably still around there coding. But the last version was more than 10 years ago, so we should probably not use this one. Let's go over to this one. Okay, dropzone.js-rails has almost 7 million downloads. So this is probably the one that we would use. But the latest version was in 2020, which is interesting because so much has happened in the Rails JavaScript world since 2020. Like we've totally changed things. We got rid of compilers because compilers used to be a part of Rails. Like at a certain point, I think in Rails 6 or something, they just added in, uh, what was it, Webpack? We had Webpack for a while. So I even remember developing on that. But now they took it out and it's all like import maps or you can use ES build, which is another compiler, but more lightweight. So I'd be curious to see if this still works with the current setup with import maps. Drop zone JS dash rails. So let's see. Uh, the latest version is drop zone 5.7. So that's probably fine. You have to do this like require thing. You know what, why wouldn't it work? So let's see if it works. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open up a new Ubuntu console and let's go ahead and just create a basic app. World's new, I'm just gonna call it Fun with Gems. And I will add Tailwind because I wonder if that would conflict with it. But I like using Tailwind. I don't think it'll conflict. I just think maybe the styling won't be styled with Tailwind. But yeah, let's do... Should I use Tailwind or not? I guess Tailwind, that just is another gem. So you know what? Let's try to do it without any gems. And even if it's ugly, we can try to make it look better with what we have. And that might even qualify for another... We could find like a gem for UI. Uh, so that could be another gem that we do in this video. So let's do Rails New Fun with Gems. Nothing else. So it's only the name of the gem. Usually I do like the database and the CSS, but for this video, I'm just going to keep it simple. And we're going to do just a straight Rails or default Rails app. I love that you can do that without specifying anything. You don't have to worry about specifying all that stuff. I always do it, and you know what? It's not really the best. I mean, it might be the best idea because Postgres is usually better than the default, which is just stored on disk. So when you go to deploy, like it depends how you want to manage your app. For me, I'm deploying an app right now that's using SQLite. So now that the app is done generating, we can see into it just like that and then start the server since we're not using tailwind the command is just rails s or rails server so s would be short for server and then when you do run that it's going to be available at localhost colon 3000 just like always and we'll see the rails screen right here so that means everything's good and we're ready to start coding so now I'm actually just going to stop the server for a second so we can install the gem. Let's go back to this GitHub page 
and I'm just going to grab the name out of this, and I'll go to console and do bundle add. Now I would think the dash might actually be a problem, so I might have to add it in the string. That should work. There we go, it's getting the gem right there, it installed it. Now it says we need to add this line to the application JS. I've, I'm not sure if this will work with import maps. Let's do a code dot. I'm just going to open up the code. Then we go to app JavaScript application JS and drop this line in. <laughs> Which doesn't really look right because now we're using like import. The require, I think that has to do with a like, compiler. But let's try. So now we can grab the styling, add that to application.css. So we'll go to assets, style sheets, application CSS. And I guess we would put it in this comment. I never really Oh, I guess so that's how you add new files in, right? So require tree just means it adds all of the files in the existing folder. And bam, you're set. Okay. So now we should be good to go with this gem, if it still works. What we're going to need is a model to test this with. So I'm going to do a rails gd scaffold command to generate the views and everything for a new model. So the model that we can do, since we're doing drop zone, we might want to make it like a post. And a post could have a quick caption. So you wouldn't want it to be too much text and then an image and you type attachment and that could be fine. Maybe we'll have just a quick username field. We won't even have a user model right now. So we can generate this new model right here and then we'll run rails db migrate. So that'll set up the database and set up the table. And after that, we can just start the server again. Oh. I did bin dev because I'm so used to that, but since we're not using uh, bin dev, we're not using foreman to start all the different servers for Tailwind and everything. We just do Rails S one time and it starts one server, which can be kind of nice to develop like this and I haven't done it in a while. So now I'm going to go to the code and I'm going to quickly set the root of the application. So to do that, let's go to config routes.rb. At the bottom, I'm going to uncomment the root and I'm going to set that to actually the post index. So that's already right. And then we can reload and we'll see. Oh, we get an error. Cannot load such files to ask. So that's what I kind of was expecting. Uh, it does not work. So when we try to require something like this, I guess it's a sask file. So I'm just going to mark this as no, it doesn't work with import maps and new rails but we probably could get it to work and look it up i mean what is it supposed to do anyways they don't have any documentation so it's not really i think it's one of those things where it does an automatic drop zone or like you have to use the class or something or maybe all it's about is just I think all it does is just sets up, I guess this is what it says right here, integrate this guy's awesome file upload into, oh yeah. So look, apparently at one point it was just called this guy's name drop zone, but then it's turned into drop zone.js. But it's so much easier than that. So we don't need that. That gem's actually really bad. We need a, a better one but i guess people already know you're supposed to use import maps so instead of using you can basically do the same commands as the npm guide that's a cool thing so you just take the drop zone we can do import map pin drop zone and we can do the same code right here in stimulus which is pretty sick i like that i like that that works and we can do that but yeah that's not that's the import maps gem which i guess is it is a gem the import maps library uh, yeah, uh, I guess we have figured that out. Drop zone does not work. So this is kind of a fail. I'm gonna delete all the code for drop zone. Sorry, but that does not work with my setup. 
And I'm just trying to keep it simple. I don't want to have to do anything crazy to get this to work. I'm going to go to the gem file. And let's get rid of this drop zone gem. And then I'm just going to remove gem file lock bundle again just so that we know that we don't have that gem anymore. Alright, that's one gem down. Now on to some more gems. So the next gem that I want to use is actually a gem that I developed with my dad, which we're really excited about. And it's called App Chat. So App Chat is a gem that allows you to easily add a whole ChatGPT UI to any Ruby on Rails app. This is a crazy gem that we developed. Me and him developed the first prototype of this gem over a weekend. And then my dad's been going hard just working on new features for it ever since. But it is open source. You can go to the GitHub right here. And if anybody wants to do a pull request and look at this code, uh, let me just show you how awesome it is right now. So to use App Chat, let's go back into the terminal. And we're going to add this gem. So this gem is really cool. So the first thing is you need to have Olama. So you can go to olama.com and that's the library that we're using to interact with the AI model. So Olama is an open source AI model host and it's really cool, but you do have to download it. So you can just go to this website, go download. And then if you're on Mac or Linux, and also if you're on Windows, if you want to just have it set up on your Windows, you can do that. For me, I'm using WSL. So I set it up using the Linux install command. So I'll just copy that, go to my terminal, and then I'm gonna create a new terminal window, just like this. And then we would run this command to install Olama. And I already have it installed, but once that finishes running, you can do Olama run, Llama 3.1. And when you do this, it'll go and download the Llama 3.1 model. So you'll see it takes up like a couple gigabytes and just has to download it and then once it's done it'll run it just like this and you'll see you have a prompt that you can talk to you see i can just say hey and then it replies right away and i can ask it whatever i want at this point so let's go back to the terminal that was inside of our gem and from here what we're going to do is once we have a llama set up that's perfect now we can install the gem and we're going to only have to run two commands to get this whole chat application set up. So here's the commands. We're going to do a bundle add app chat. So that's going to add the app chat gem to our app so that we can use it. And after we have added the app chat gem, we're going to run a Rails G app chat command, which is going to be a generator that sets up the whole chat application. This is really cool. If you look at what it's doing, it's like generating different pages and models and files. But this is such a cool gem. And I'm really excited to be able to show you this. So just like that, the app chat gem has installed. And you see you even get this nice message right here. So you know at this point, it's set up. Now all you have to do is start the server. And actually, the cool thing about the app chat gem is it adds Tailwind. So that might be cool or bad. You might want to be careful with adding this to gems that are not using Tailwind or like even gems that are existing because it does create a couple models. But still, this is very cool as a starter template. You could use this to create any sort of chatbot. And we're going to be talking about that a lot. My dad has uh, basically figured out ways that you can have your AI chatbot do functions and talk inside of your Rails app and like execute things like basically run Ruby code like the AI bot can talk to Ruby and run Ruby code, but you want to be careful with that. So we have like specialized functions that are already built into the gem. That you guys will see when you use the gem. Anyways, now that we have this set up, we're going to use bin slash dev instead of rails s because now it's switched to tailwind. We're going to do bin slash dev and now we can go to localhost again, reload, and we're going to go to slash chats now. And you'll see we have this chat set up right now. So we don't have any chats yet. We're going to create our first chat. It looks like my Redis server wasn't started. 
and you quickly start that. So I have this whole script because I'm on WSL and you can't do like <laughs> you can't have system processes because it's a virtual machine, I guess. Anyways, now that I have Redis set up, we won't see any errors. Uh, now I can do my chat right here. So I'm going to say, what's up? And look at that. He sent the message. Yo, he's chill. That's chill. So this AI bot's pretty nice. See, chill vibes only. So what do you want me to ask? We can ask anything. And also it has web scraping capabilities. Or I guess more like search capabilities. It can look up stuff for you. That's already built in. And as you can see, we also have... Oh, you can't even see it because my head was blocking. Sorry. So let me explain the features real quick. You have this whole chat UI just like this. You can talk to the chat very easily with this UI that's pretty clean. We also have this microphone button which does speech recognition. So you can click this and it'll listen to what you're saying and write it into the text field on the page. And this is stuff that's already built into browsers with the speech recognition API. So any of you guys can use this, it's free. Uh, you just use it in JavaScript. But we decided to build it into this app because ChatGPT has it and we just feel like it's a pretty useful feature. Now we also have the chats. It has context, so I can tell it something and it'll remember it. So let me just tell it, my favorite programming language is Ruby on Rails. Let me send the message. And let's see what it has to say. Fresh, I think I meant to say fresh, is amazing. He says, what do you like most about Ruby on Rails? Are you ready for RailsConf yet? Oh, that's sick. So it knows that there's a RailsConf. Is it coming up? Wait, no, I forgot. There's a lot of stuff about RailsConf that's like confusing right now. So yeah, this <laughs> obviously the chatbot doesn't know much. How about I ask it to look it up though? Can you look up when's the next Ruby conference? And it's going to Look, searching Google for upcoming Ruby conferences. So that's what it's doing right now. And in the back end, it's going to be running this job that does the search. Let's see, I don't know if it works because, well, I'll just show you. So let's go back to the code. The thing really was, <laughs> Uh, the function somewhere around here in the service we have a web search service which is what we're doing to as you can see we're yielding this message searching Google and then we're doing this browser which is essentially a web scraper which is going to open up a headless browser and go to Google search and then return some of the content now for me I think I've been having problems with Chrome driver it's been really frustrating I haven't been able to really get it to work uh, yeah, so that's why it's not showing up now. I had an idea. I think my Firefox driver works better So I think it's as simple as just changing this to Firefox And it should work now so Instead of using Google it's using Firefox as the browser So let's say let's so let's make sure it's still good And then we can ask it to do another search Still here all right, I want to re-ask this question, and hopefully I can use the Firefox browser now to look it up. Wait, no, it didn't even use the, it used its own knowledge, because that's another option. It basically will determine whether you want it to look up something on Google or use its own knowledge. And I explicitly said, can you look up? I'm not sure. Maybe switching to Firefox did something, but I don't think. So another thing I could ask is, how is the weather today in Texas? And send the message. If it, oh, searching Google for weather today in Texas. Oh, but I see an error right here. <laughs> 
of something like binary is not a Firefox executable. So that didn't work. Okay, I'm gonna look up water. Get water to work on Ubuntu WSL. Chrome driver helper. Oh, is that something? Deprecated and please use web drivers instead. Oh, there's a gem for that. No way. Okay. So maybe that's something that we should add into the app chat gem. Because, like I said, we built it together, it's open source. So any of you guys can go do contributions too if you want to make this app chat gem better. And also go and create a bunch of apps with this. It's really cool stuff. So let's try to do this. Let's add in the web drivers gem and let's see if that helps. Okay, also let's put it back to Chrome. That's what I want to be using. Let's go in gem file, drop in that web drivers gem, do a bundle. And all we have to do is to require the specific driver that we need. So I want Chrome driver. I'm not sure where we put it. Um, where are you supposed to put explicit requires? Maybe an application.rb? Or do we, will we do it inside of the web search? I feel like we want to require it right when we start the app though. Which I think would also mean we should restart the, the console, which we don't even have it started. So that's good. Let's see if this fixes it. Let's run bin slash dev. Let's go back to our chat. Hello, uh, AI model. Funny things. It knows about capitalization, knows all that stuff. This is going to think it's funny if I like talk, start talking weird. Because it can do all sorts of cool stuff. Let me say, look up some good, uh, look up some fun things, or some fun, look up some concerts that are happening this weekend in Austin, Texas. I guess it shouldn't be a question. Maybe when you, yeah, when you say a question, it might not think that you want it to look it up more than like an extra an instruction like without the question mark that might be something that we want to look into anyways if we get an error i think we are getting an error so even with the require of the chrome driver it's supposed to set everything up for us what did it say Please set required version to a known Chrome driver version. I guess that's what they want. What version should we use? 2.0? I guess we need this in initializer. That was so long ago. So we probably want like the latest. Is this a version? Yes, it is. Like they have this really long number now. Uh, I just want to copy the number. I don't know if that's actually the version. I guess it is. So we need to set that. It's throwing an error. I'm gonna do a web driver .rb. Let's set this required version. And we should be good, although I still don't know. I still don't really know if it's gonna work or not. Let's restart the server and try it out. Now I'm gonna go back to the app. And let's just see if it's still running by asking something. Oh, 
Okay, he's still good, still chilling. I want to try to ask a question now. Uh, like I could ask. Probably the best ones are just saying like, "Can you look up something?" Look up. Uh, what cool things are happening in tech right now? Oh, with no question mark. I always try to put a question mark, but you probably shouldn't. Let's see, wait, no, it's it didn't use the scraper. It didn't use the web search service. It actually just tried to answer the question. So I have to wait. I think I have to wait. It's probably better if I. Well, I probably could just spin up a new chat. Here's a few things. I guess it is kind of true, right? But this stuff's also kind of old. Like it's not really, I was trying to say, okay, forget that. Look up what restaurants are open on Sundays in Austin. Let's see if it does a search for that. Yes, it's searching. And if we look in the console, we're we getting any errors. I mean, we're not getting any errors, but we're also not seeing anything happen. Be like the last thing that happened was just it sent the message. It's weird. On my dad's computer on Mac, it works perfectly fine. It's just for me, the Chrome drivers don't work. Uh, I really don't want to make this something that doesn't work because actually it does work look the only thing that doesn't work is the web searching functionality obviously and i know my dad said there was a way that he like initialized it we're in a rake task it created the function so if we look right here we have this app chat function rake task where we created the web search function so i guess what we could do is just delete all of the functions in the rails console so let's go rails -y. We're going to go app chat function destroy all. That was just one function. We could define our own functions too. That might be something fun that we could do in this video, like have a function that does something cool. Since now we have that, that way of doing it. A framework. All right. So what I'm going to do is now that we got rid of the searching mode, it's not going to be able to search anymore. So I'm going to try to test that. Let's say, hey, what's up? It's always how I start to chat. <laughs> so he's chill, nothing from his end. Okay, can I say, can you look up what there is to do today? And I wanted to say, no, it can't look it up because I deleted the function for that. Oh yeah, look, so it didn't, it didn't even know about the function. That's sweet. So that means it worked. Like the code that we have written in the gem. So this is awesome actually to see how this is working. Uh, so if we want to create our own service, it's just as easy as this. You create a class name and it's going to send the parameters. Oh, and then you create function parameters. Yo, that's so cool. So can the parameters be anything? Or no, you set the name of the parameter and then you set the example value. And that's going to be... This is a little bit confusing. <laughs> but it's also really cool just because I've never really looked into this yet. And then on this, we have two prompt hash. Wait, that's on the abstract function. So we're not gonna be messing with that really. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna create a new function. And then we have the class name, of course, over here. This is the one for web search. It's very simple. As you can see, all it's doing is it's running this code and then it looks like it returns the response so that's what this function would be looking for whenever we run that function we would get the response and then we would pass it into the ai chat so that the ai chat can talk about it all right guys so we've already looked at two different gems and those are the two gems that i already knew i really wanted to talk about uh, from here, now I'm just open to see what other gems we can try out. 
and hopefully we can have an exciting video. So I guess I was thinking like where can I find cool gems for this video and I'm not even really sure because I could go on the search and see maybe I could look at popular gems but it's probably just going to show like the most downloads which are just the built-in gems. That's not going to be that cool. How about we search in a generic word and see what sort of gems come out. So how about front end and see what we get. So Solidus front end which is a legacy cart and storefront for the Solidus e-commerce project. But it's a, I guess it's a legacy gem. So now it says we recommend you use this. I've heard of Solidus. I guess it's like some sort of framework that uses Rails. Let's see. Solidus, the e-commerce frameworks for industry trailblazers. But I'm pretty sure it's just Rails behind the scenes. If I'm right, I mean... It looks just like a simple Rails app. They have Spree. Spree is a library for like payment processing, I think. This is sweet. I like that they have this Solidus. I like that it's like, it's popular. I've never tried this. Maybe it's really good and I'm missing out. Let me know if you guys have used Solidus before. Let's see. Become the brand everyone talks about. E-commerce platform. A lot of people use it. That's honestly awesome that they just created this little framework. I don't really know what they even do either. Subscriptions, marketplaces, so all that stuff they take care of. No way. This is something that I would probably be interested in using for e-commerce app, which I tend to do a lot of them. So I might need to make a video on this if it makes it easier. Because usually I write it all from scratch. Installing. Okay, you know what? Let's do it right now. Because I already have it up. Let's build an app with Solidus. So it's e-commerce. We're going to need to think of like something to sell. I guess it doesn't really matter. It could be anything. So let's just do a Rails new uh, groovy shop. I have a groovy ruby shop and I'm going to guess I don't use anything like I don't need any CSS framework or, or databases. I'll just keep it default because that's what I want to do for this video. So let's run this rails new command groovy ruby shop. And we're going to be installing Solidus on a brand new app. Let's see. Let's check out the introduction first. It says, Solidus is a free open source e-commerce platform based on the Ruby on Rails frameworks. Built as a Rails engine, Solidus is designed to be incredibly flexible. You start from a strong foundation and a fully functional backend, but you can customize every single aspect of the platform. Wait, I really like that. That sounds great. It sounds like something that I've been actually wanting to build myself. I've noticed it's a problem. Uh, like, I never know. Like, if I want to build an e-commerce app, what do I use? That's literally what I wanted to build. This is so cool. So it says, in the beginning, there was Spree Commerce, a still very popular e-commerce platform for Rails. Spree was an incredibly active community maintained project that saw a lot of activity. In 2015, however, Stemble, an e-commerce consulting firm, didn't like the direction of the project. They forked it and called it Solidus. <clears throat> Honestly, that's so cool. 2015 sounds like such an old year for me. Like, I, don't, I definitely had nothing to do with coding. I was very just young back then. And yeah, I didn't really know anything about the internet or the world or anything. So Spree project, that's so cool back in... Back then, there was a thing called Spree Commerce. And their site looks pretty good in open source e-commerce. I love how it's open source too. That's just so cool. And you get this whole thing right out of the box. This looks great. So I gotta start messing with this if it's that easy. Spree Commerce has a whole solution that's open source. All right, but let's start with, let's not do Spree. So Solidus was forked off of spree right so let's go oh, i guess i'm just reading through the whole what is this introduction let's go to installation that kind of took a little turn but now we're in installation all right it says for ruby it always supports the latest or the oldest maintained ruby version that's cool so i guess it's backwards compatible if you have a really old version of ruby also the oldest rails version cool so you also probably want to get lib VIPs or image magic. That's something that you also would get with if you're using active storage with images. 
I think I already have this, but if you guys are watching, following along, you might want to realize that. Usually people know this, like, but it can be a pain. So next it says, Solidus has a few different components, so core, backend, and API. Okay, so next, in a new app, if you don't have an existing Ruby on Rails app, dash, so I guess dash T to skip tests. Nothing crazy, so that's what we just did. We created our Rails app. So then it's as simple as this, bundle add Solidus. Let's go ahead and do that. Wait, we're not even inside of the app right now. So let's CD into, called it Groovy Ruby. Oh. Okay, and let's do our bundle add Solidus. So it should be fetching the gem. It's taking a little second. Probably it's, it's a pretty big gem if you think about it. And then once it would finish, we're gonna run this next uh, Solidus generator. But I'm gonna have to wait for this to finish installing. Oh, we're finally getting some feedback and it got it all installed. So I don't know if there was just a delay in the network or something or the Ruby Gems website. It could just be the Ruby Gems site was having a glitch. All right, so now I'm going to run the Solidus install. Oh, cool. Okay, so now it says, which front end would you like to use? No way. But answer, I don't know. Oh, do they mean like React, Vue, all of those things? Which front end? Uh, so it'll prompt you which storefront you want to install. We provide a ready to use template called uh, Solidus Starter Front End. There's also the option to choose no storefront and build your own. Oh, so I guess this is like a template that I would use. So front end equals starter. You would get, oh, whoops. Or you have the option to do your own front end. Starter set looks really sick. Okay, I like that. So there's there's only one, but I'm guessing there's other templates too that we could look into. But this is very cool already. So I guess what I do is I'll type in starter. But then eventually if we get other front ends, or we could just say none if we want to do you know nothing. And you, you have a lot of flexibility here. Okay, which payments method would you like to use? That's sweet. So we could do PayPal, Stripe, or Braintree. Interesting. So I've never used Braintree, but I know I got a request from a commenter before who was asking for uh, me to make a video on alternative payment providers. So Braintree might be something that I want to do since this video is all about trying new things. I could try Braintree. Although <laughs> as soon as I get here, it says they're moving soon. And I guess it's by PayPal. I'm not really... I don't really like PayPal too much. They've done some things to me, like taken my account with money on it and stolen it or locked it. Yeah, so I don't really like PayPal. So I'll use Stripe. <clears throat> Although, honestly, I don't think I want to set a Stripe account up right now. So I'll just do none. But this is very cool that they have all those options. So I'll definitely use the Solidus again when I'm doing my next e-commerce tutorial. Okay, now where would you like to mount Solidus? Slash store, slash stop. Oh, so you can use it on, you can add this to a Rails website and then you can define a route so it doesn't just take over your whole app. But look, the default is slash, which means it would take over the root of the application. That's so cool. So that means you could have, I could add this to my, just any of one of my apps if I wanted to add a shop, like a uh, shopping section. That's sweet. So yeah, let's do default. So if we don't do anything, just press enter. It should go default. This is so cool. Okay, this is this reminds me of the app chat gym. Because it's like creating all these different tables and like setting up things. But this is a whole gem. Wow. You can, the front end is interchangeable. Like that's just very smart right there. Okay, so then, oh, overwrite. 
Ah, it's trying to overwrite my index.js. I guess I'll let it. I'll say yes, because I might need some sort of JavaScript framework. Oh, look, it's even building Tailwind. So it's adding Tailwind CSS. No way, it's adding Tailwind. So that's something that AppChat Gems does too. And we were kind of like embarrassed about it. But look at look at this right here. Solidus is adding Tailwind. But I guess it's because that's what the starter template uses. And it was probably updated. <clears throat> It's like four years. I think they had Tailwind four years ago for sure. So it's possible that they just chose to do that. Because that's four years ago. It was only 2020. I was using Tailwind back then, I think. Probably a little bit. It says rebuilding. Oh, we're all the way down here. It's still going. This is crazy. Solidus has been sold successfully. They don't have ASCII art like app chat, but this is so cool. It added it, it even added in like all these different gems, images, everything. Okay, so now what do we do? Now it says rail server, but if we're using Tailwind, do we still do rail server? I don't know, let's do it. Let's do rails S and then let's go to local 3000 and see what happens. Uh. It's loading. Stuff's happening in the console. No way. Look at this. We got this whole store. This looks fire. Wow. And it already has some sample products. Yeah, this looks sick. This red shirt with the whole page background. It looks like this is a good, this is a solid. I guess that's why they call it Solidus, because this is solid, dude. This is great. Clothing. Yeah, so this is something that I could have... I could build this too. I could build, like, a template like this, but it's a pain. And it's great that they decided to turn it into a library. Something that I actually wanted to do. Like, I wanted to do the same exact thing to make it easy. Like, I still could do... Because it's only for e-commerce, there's a lot of more ideas to have besides e-commerce, like, templates for different... Like social medias or AI apps, like all of that stuff. And I'm trying to start releasing some of my templates. So this is like a search, I guess. So maybe like if you look up tote, just like that, it pops up a little tote bag. Although it would be cool if they included a picture, but that's just cool that it, that it even works, you know? They pop up, you can actually search through there and then, wow. And they have a link back to the Solidus, of course. We could log in or create a new account. All right, sweet. So let's see what it looks like adding something to cart. It's probably gonna look pretty clean. Add to cart, just like that. I mean, it's simple. And then check out, of course, and check out as a guest. Boom, we have all of this. And of course, we're not even using a Amen. So I get this is very good though. The billing address and then the shipping address section too. This is great. Yeah, so all this is pretty solid. I love it. And then of course customizing it. I'm guessing I would just open up this app and we can customize all of it. Just like the app chat gem. Just essentially copying over the views over to your app. So if you look in the app views, whoa, we got all these different files like it's basically a huge app or not a huge app but like pretty big app already oh no models so i guess they don't copy over the models they kind of hide those just so you probably don't but like the controllers they have them all out here we go in here and change stuff one is like products controller you can see what's going on it's kind of a lot of code here Experience. I mean, it's just a lot because I don't really know what's going on. <clears throat> I could probably try to read through it, but I don't even feel like it, you know? If we go to the views, though, we could see what the views are looking like. If we go to views, products, like product image is what it's looking like. Oh, they're using view component. It's crazy. Yeah, view component right here. Yeah, I like view components. They're pretty chill because, yeah, I guess there's like all this different specific code. 
And if you look at where's the template? Oh, it's just a content tag. So I guess it's pretty simple. Like a link to. So that is a good reason to use a view component to have like a bunch of logic on top of a simple content tag. I like view components. So that's another gem we could check out, although I've already used it, so I feel like it's not new. It's interesting that they use it behind the scenes. I guess the views are just pretty light. Yeah, look at how light these are. These are simple. And it is using Tailwind. Like, they use it in such a way that you can barely see the code. Like this, they're doing the T. I think that's internationalization. Or no, that's template. I don't even know. See, I don't even know what the T is for. Does that go over to Spree? No, see, there's not even a file for that. I mean, I don't know. I think that's internationalization. If I search for this, I don't even see where it's at. See, I don't see where it's defined. Well, I guess because they would be namespaced. Still. This is cool. <laughs> Solidus is a crazy framework. So now we see, like, if we wanted to spin up an app, now for customizing the products, I'm not sure how we get to that point. So if I see like customization, customizing your storefront, let's go there. Editing a view. So they have like this whole example on how to add your own styling. That's sick. But that's not what I was even, I was trying to figure out how can I just, how to, just change the products. <laughs> it's such a simple thing. I guess they don't do bin dev because you don't even need to, like they're not expecting you to even change the code per se right at the beginning. I wonder, is there an admin section? There is admin login. So that's probably how we get to uh, like inside of that. So I'm gonna open up another console, go to Groovy Ruby shop. Let's see. Let's see if we can check out that admin model. No, there's no admin. So what would it be called? <laughs> Probably inside the code we could see. So let's open up the code. Wait, there was nothing in the models though. If you remember, maybe it's in the lib folder. Nope. Nothing in the lib. Nothing in the vendor. Overrides. Nope. So yeah, uh, let's look it up then. Create admin user Solidus. There's even some guys, or wait, my bad, some lady, Nat Natalie. That's cool. I used to work with a girl named Natalie, developer, but she's from Switzerland. That's crazy. The other girl was from like Colombia or something. Cool. Well, thanks for the guide, Natalie. Or wait, Natalia. My bad. I guess it wasn't the same name. Uh. <laughs> so you create a regular user, and I guess a regular user is a spree dash dash user. Oh, I would have never known. User equals spree dash user, and then we're gonna set the email to indigo, and then user. We are going to grab the spree rolls. Spree rolls, why does it sound like some? Ooh, maybe I'm just hungry. We're gonna get spree roll, find by name admin. Just like that. Add it. And then I guess we would dot, we would dot save. Wait, an error. User errors. Oh, passwords required. So what does that mean? Natalia, you didn't mention that there was a password required. Empty attribute. Oh wait, of course the password is required. She just didn't show that in like the dot new. So I guess let me set password. Set that to something. And then save, and it did work. 
Ah, oh, I forgot you can't clear in here. But I think we are good now. So as long as we can remember that email and password, we can go back to that page that we were on right here. Admin login. We log in. This could be a little bit prettier, but I guess the admin section doesn't have to be pretty. And you know what? This looks really good right here. They even have a toggle for show legacy UI. This is what it looks like, which, oh, this is, this is, I mean, it's all right, but it's also pretty ugly to just see like a bunch of fields like this on a page. If you turn it off, this is what the new UI looks like. Looks pretty clean. And you click on a product. I guess this is the order. This is so cool. This actually does look really good. You have all this different information about the product, return, canceled, and then I guess it hooks into the libraries and just works right off the bat. You have all the products right here. Okay, this is awesome. So what I'll do is I'll just delete all the products. Boom, we have no more products anymore. And I just do add new. And there's a lot of information, but let's just say I'm trying to sell like a t-shirt. This is my awesome t-shirt. All right, I was just realizing I have to show my friend about this too because he's trying to build a website for his t-shirt and he was following my other tutorial where we were building the whole thing, which is sweet, but like we weren't building this much. Like this would be way too much to build at one point. Like all of these different fields. I don't even know about half this stuff, but it could be important. Although also it's at the same time, it's over complex if you think about it. Like this UI is cool, but like also you have all these different pages and like, man, I don't know. He might like it or he might not. I think he'll probably like it. Like once I show it off, just like I'm showing it off here, uh, which I guess I kind of already did show it off. Now that I'm thinking about it. So now I'm trying to set a price. Well, there already is a price. So I don't even know what half of this stuff is. Oh, there's stock. So you can set the stock value. I guess right now, like it starts off at zero. So these are things that are kind of like, I guess it's cool. And I can check. Yes. Now we have a hundred. Oh, and there's this whole, <laughs> we got a whole error, which I have no idea why it's like IO error close stream. No idea what happened there. We reload. It looks like it did go through though. And there's just all these different things, promotions, there's stock. So we already did that. There's users. This is so cool. All right. I don't know about the example.com. I guess that's a link to, to like the store landing page, I guess. So if you go to settings, oh yeah, it's right here. So this is this would be where you configure the store. Sample store. Oh, so you could use Solidus. You could use Solidus like Shopify because they have stores where you can create a new store and then give it a slug. Slug, right. So then it would be slash sample store. No, but that's not right. Or maybe stores slash. Yeah, I think it was like this. Sample store. Wasn't the URL didn't have a number in it? Thought it did at a certain point. I have no idea about this. So you can create multiple stores i'm gonna have to look into this more but i still like i don't have an e-commerce app but this is just huge there's so much into this gem i'm gonna give this a pass this is a good like i'm gonna give this a thumbs up it was a good gem i got it to work it's using the the framework that i like you know the wait why is there only oh because it's outdated there's only two stars <laughs> i was gonna give it a star but yeah that's cool so we use solidus and I liked it. It's a cool gem. So that's three gems that we have reviewed. I really like Solidus. I think it'd be great if you were trying to build some sort of, you know, app, some sort of anything. If you're selling products, you know, mess with Solidus. It's built with Ruby on Rails. You can learn more about Rails. You can mod it. I think it's a good idea. You can also like spin up if you wanted to just, let's say, have a shop app 
and pay less. You know, Shopify, the minimum is $15 a month. But if you really did it, you get a domain for like $10 a year. So that's $1 a month about, even less than a dollar a month. And then for the server, you could start off on DigitalOcean. The cheapest one might be $6 a month and it works pretty good, like really good. You can get your Rails app together. All you need is that solid disk. You deploy it to production and your total cost is like $7 a month for the start. You can turn it into a whole business. So it's at least half of Shopify and you get to learn coding skills. So I think it's a good idea to do solid disk for any sort of e-commerce app you're building.